Uh, well, genetics is kind of like that perfect um, balance between math and biology. So, I mean, it's so, you know, so it's, it's like understanding the natural world and these principles going on in it, but using um, a mathematical framework in order to understand the process. So it's, for me, perfect. It's exactly um, like what the kinds of problems I like to think about. People ask me this a lot, and I like to always, about, you know, this sort of algorithm I developed, and I, it's nice, but I like to always say that I put it into a context that it's only one, it's an incremental step. Many people before me and after me and working with me helped to contribute to it. I think it's just a little bit about the way of looking at data. So a lot of people for a long time, you know, well, when you start going all the way back, even before Darwin and Walls, people were thinking about what is, you know, evolution and how does it take place, and just and the simple principle it's all based on is um, uh, if something is advantageous, if it somehow enhances the survival or reproductive success of its carriers, then it'll rapidly spread through the population, right? So people who carry a certain genetic trait will be more likely to survive or reproduce, so they'll pass on their um, genes much faster. And so those genes that are good for you will spread through the population. And so that's a principle that's been around for a long time, and a lot of other scientists have been thinking about ways of Therefore, like looking for things that are very young and prevalent in populations that are likely to have spread through natural selection. And that's really all I was doing is making an incremental step on how we, how we study that. How do we detect things that are very prevalent in, in human populations but have rapidly spread through human populations. Um, and so that's, the, that's what I was looking for. So it was just, like I said, working with um, lots of other people in my group. Um, so just to name a few, David Reich, Eric Lander, David Altshuler. Um, you know, I was working in a community of people who were um, all thinking about looking at genetic variations and how you might look at them and how you might understand them. And so reading lots of papers from other folks um, who are doing great work in that area, I just looked at ways that you could basically go across the human genome and look at every variation, everything that's, um, you know, variable between human populations. So, you know, we call them sort of mutations that are polymorphic, multiple forms in the population. And I looked across the genome at every single one and said, how common is it, right, how, how prevalent is it in the population? And then I used um, a framework looking at the, the uh, what's going on in that region of the genome to date, to date the mu mutation, to say how long ago it happened. Um, and it's just, it's kind of like it's a sort of a process of decay. The longer a new variant has been around, the more the background on which it exists begins to de decay. And so that's what I was looking at as I, I just developed a way that you could measure how long um, something's been around based on the background it exists on.